morning. And welcome to Third Presbyterian Church on this third Sunday in Eastertide. What a glorious day it is going to be. I am one of the pastors here, the Reverend Rebecca Seegers, and it is my joy and privilege to have you with me today worshiping the Lord. If you would be so kind as to let us know of your presence by taking the friendship pad along the side of your pew and pass it down and let us know that you are here, we would be delighted to welcome you. If you are worshiping with us online, we are also grateful that you are here. Please let us know of your presence there by perhaps telling us your name in the chat and where you are worshiping from. We are delighted to worship the Lord together. I do have a few announcements today to lift up to you. The first is that after worship today, fellowship will be downstairs in the Celebration Center as the Sunday seminar has shifted to after worship in Johnston Hall. That is the second in a series on uh, Christian and uh, Israeli Zionism led by Reverend Dr. Melanie Dugood May, and there will be a Mediterranean lunch provided as well should you choose to go to that. Um, next, uh, oh, today at four o'clock, there will be a concert, a concert that will feature our own organists, uh, Charlie Francis and James Keeley. So I invite you to join us for that at four o'clock today and the reception afterwards. Next Sunday, we will be having our intergenerational Sunday. So this is a fabulous day for the family and friends here at Third Church to break bread together after worship, where we all enjoy a program that is inclusive of all ages down in the Celebration Center after worship. I encourage you to join us for that. One little small typo and correction in the uh, congregational update is that the youth group bake sale, the youth group is so active right now, I can't even tell you, and they are hosting a bake sale on Sunday the 28th, not Saturday the 28th, which does not exist in 2024, but Sunday the 28th immediately following worship. Finally, I need to acknowledge that we have two white roses on the communion table today. This past week, our congregation suffered two untimely deaths. We lost Paul Held. His funeral service will be on Friday at 4 p.m. upcoming. Please do keep his wife, Jennifer, and daughter, Megan, in your prayers. And the second is to acknowledge the infant daughter of Nadun Daniel and Anjali Zechariah. Please keep them and their daughter Joanna in your prayers as they mourn the loss of Abigail. That service will be on Saturday next week at 10 a.m. Additionally, on Saturday next week at 1 p.m., there will be a service for Rusty Olson. So we are remembering folks that we love and holding them in prayer in this week ahead. Now I would invite Jeremy Stratton Smith, our clerk of session, to read the call to the congregational meeting. Good morning, everyone. Um, Notice is hereby given that the Congregational and Corporation Meeting of the Congregation of the Third Presbyterian Church of Rochester in the County of Monroe, New York, will be held today, uh, that's today, Sunday, April 14th, um, immediately following worship in person in the sanctuary here and on the worship live stream for the purposes of the report of the nominating committee, the election of elders for the classes of 2026 and 2027, the election of deacons for the class of 2027, and the election of nominating committee members at large for the class of 2026. Um, any other business which properly comes before the congregation and corporation may be transacted at this meeting. Um, for those who would like to read this again, you may find this notification in the back of the bulletin, um, and you can find the live stream on our YouTube channel also uh, linked there. So uh, in addition to the many things happening, um, we hope that you'll be able to join us for that. Thank you. I promise it will be brief, so I do invite you to remain after worship, whether you're online or here in the sanctuary, to transact this very important business around the leadership in the coming year of this congregation. Now come, 
Let us worship the Lord. Sing praises to God, ye faithful. Give thanks to God's holy name. Weeping may linger for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You turn our weeping to dancing, God. You remove the garments of mourning and clothe us in gladness. May we praise you and not be silent. We will give thanks to you, O God, forever. Please be seated. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. Let us confess our sin, trusting in God's grace. God, we confess that there are many hours when we are not mindful of your presence. We give up the comfort and avoid the challenge that come from your word and spirit. Forgive us and restore the joy of knowing you. May Christ be known among us in the breaking of bread.
Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. be seated. I would invite Elder Betsy Marvin and Worship Committee Co-Chair, Brett and Mariah Salerno, their daughter London, their sons Boston and Nash, and their sponsors, otherwise known everywhere else in the world as godparents, to come and join me up here at the front. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and in earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hear also these words from Holy Scripture. There is one body, and one spirit. Just as you were called to the hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. On behalf of the session, I present Boston Matthew Salerno, and Nash Daniel Salerno to receive the sacrament of baptism. Brett and Mariah and London, do you desire that Boston and Nash be baptized? Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your child? To Lamar and Brianne, Michael and Dara, do you promise through prayer and example, to support and encourage Boston and Nash to be faithful Christians. Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Boston and Nash by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of the Church? Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, you have known your you have made yourself known throughout history through waters, through blowing your breath upon the waters to part them and divide the sea into the land, from parting the waters yet again at the time of the Hebrew people leaving Egypt and crossing into the desert on their journey to the promised land. Then yet again, your own body in the person of Christ divided the waters in his baptism. Now I most humbly pray that you would separate this water from every ordinary use, that it might be a sign and symbol to everyone here, that you claim and name, that you love and protect Boston and Nash throughout all their lives. In the holy name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, hello there. Are you all right? 
He's very curious. <laughs> Boston Matthew Salerno, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May you know and feel God's love all the days of your life. Your turn. Nash Daniel Salerno, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and over and of the Holy Spirit. You are a child of the covenant. May you know and feel God's love and presence all the days of your life. I am now going to invite you to sing while we introduce you to these, the newest members of God's family here at Third Presbyterian Church. And I'm going to ask Brett and London to come on the journey along with me and Mariah and the boys. Join me in the congregational welcome. Boston Matthew Salerno and da Nash Daniel Salerno have been received into the one holy Catholic and apostolic church through baptism. God has made them members of the household of God to share with us in the priesthood of Christ. Let us welcome the newly baptized. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you into Christ's church to share with us in his ministry, for we are all one in Christ. I think this family definitely deserves a clap offering to God. Oh, let me. Our first lesson today comes to us from the book of Psalms, Psalm 4. Listen to God's word to you. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. 
ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Children, please come join me up front. So, Ms. Norton just read for us the passage that you're going to be learning about in Sunday school. It comes from Psalm 4. And the last words that she read, I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. And I love that image of lying down in peace of God keeping us safe. And I think those are things that we all think about. Now, who got away for a, a day or two days or a week during spring break? Anyone do a little, a little trip away? I did too. And I went to Toronto for a few days with my daughter and her best friend and her best friend's mom. And we were walking through Toronto, and we saw this, these great sculptures. And I'm going to ask my friend Mac to put them up for the grown-ups to see, and I'm going to show you what they are. There were three of them in a row that we saw, choir. Um, three of them in a row. So the very first one we came across was a heart that looks like it's growing right out of the ground. The second one is the big one up there. It's a peace sign. And if you look close, it's engraved with symbols of all different faiths, from the Star of David to all sorts of crosses and all sorts of symbols. And the artist said that he chose that to remind us that we're all the same, that diversity is so good, but we can all have peace together. I loved that. And then love. That was the last one we came up to. The word love, and you can't really see it, but it's written, it's written using all these little bitty locks put together. And that was, the artist invited people to put those locks on as a symbol that love endures. So, we had a bit of a sculpture sandwich. We had a love sandwich with peace in the middle. How wonderful. And you all know that's my favorite thing to talk to you all about, that God loves you always, 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 always. And that whatever you do, wherever you go, on either end, God's love is always there. And I hope right in the middle you can feel the peace and the safety and, again, that love wrapping you right up. So again, in Sunday school, you're going to focus on Psalm 4. You may even have a fun coloring page on that last verse of it about lying down. Um, and you'll have a chance to talk about what peace means to you, what you all think peace feels like. So my challenge as you spend time exploring this psalm in Sunday school and going about the rest of your day and even your week, where do you see peace and love in the world. I mean, you probably aren't going to see it growing out of the ground like I was lucky enough to, but I bet you'll see it. So be on the lookout. And let's pray, and you can repeat after me. Loving God, Loving you, surround you surround us with love. You call us to bring peace. You call us to bring peace. Help us celebrate 
all the differences in your people, and all the ways your people can live together in peace. Amen. Amen. Off to Sunday school, friends. <laughs>
The second lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. Listen for God's word to you. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The word of the Lord. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the words we heard read today from your holy book. And now, as we listen to these words which come from my lips, I most humbly pray you would pour through me the gift of preaching, that they remain no longer simply my words, but instead are transformed into your living word to each and every person who hears them, that they might be met in exactly their place of need. We pray this, Lord, in great anticipation, and in the strong name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. My friend Jill loves to paint, and she is self-taught over years, but she's gotten really good at it. And she has encouraged me over the course of the time that I have known her to come over, to paint with her. She's got supplies beyond supplies, and so I've taken her up on it twice. Both times, it was so that we could come together and paint six by six paintings for the Rochester Contemporary Art Museum's biggest fundraiser of the year. It is so much fun. We get together, she's got all these little six by six canvases. Like I said, she's got every supply imaginable. And we paint and we chat and we listen to music. And at the end of the time, she has done a couple of magnificent six by six paintings. And I have done a couple of six by six paintings. So I always have a lot of fun, though. And as I tell her this, she has encouraged me to learn a little more. And this year, she actually sent me home with a book on painting as well as several DVDs just so that if I want to try it or or think about trying it, I have a little more information. Those resources have sat on my kitchen table for the last month or so, until finally, a couple of days ago, I decided I would actually sit and watch one of the DVDs. I sat there for an hour and watched a man named... Daniel Edmondson, paint a beautiful vase with some dogwood blossoms coming out of it, little grapes at the bottom. It's this lovely little still life that is painted from a photograph. It's much harder to make it look good than I had imagined. Nonetheless, watching the video was really soothing. I mean, by the end of an hour of watching this man paint this beautiful little picture, I was at peace. And I got to tell you, most often these days, I am not at peace. The world has got a lot of scary, big, frightening stuff going on. I mean, you look at what's happening globally, and and often I list off any number of things, but you can do that for yourself. And, And then, of course... 
there's what's going on in our city or the struggles within our own congregation or even just in my own life. Life is hard and sometimes I can get very anxious about what's happening next and now I have discovered that all I have to do is pop in a DVD of Daniel Edmondson painting and life can get a lot calmer. This, I believe, is where our disciples are at the opening of our scripture lesson today. They are in the midst of a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, a lot of concern. They don't know what's going on. This is actually the day of the resurrection. In the evening of the day that Jesus rose from the dead, and they just don't know what's going on. And this is not a passage that is often preached or often read in this season. Usually what we see on this Sunday is the passage that comes right before it. That's the passage of the road to Emmaus. Are you guys all familiar with the road to Emmaus story? There are these a couple of disciples, Cleopas and an unnamed disciple, they are walking home from Jerusalem and they are sad. They are dejected and they are joined by a third man that we are told scripturally is Jesus, but they're not told. Their eyes are kept from recognizing him. And Jesus looks at them and says, what's up? Why are you guys so sad? And they say, are you the only person in Jerusalem who doesn't know what's just happened? And they proceed to tell him about Jesus and about his death and about his purported resurrection. They've heard that these women went to the tomb and that he was resurrected. But they really, really don't know what's going on. They don't know whether or not he was really resurrected or what that even means for them as his disciples. And so they're walking back about seven and a half miles to their town. And Jesus doesn't say, hey guys, it's me, take a look. Jesus instead tells them their own story, their story as people of Jewish faith. He tells them about the scriptures. He opens their minds to the fact that the Messiah will come and will have to suffer and die and then will be resurrected on the third day. He tells them all of this and, and they're beginning to feel a little bit better so that by the time they get home, it's supper time, Jesus continues to walk on, they stop him. They invite him to dinner. And they sit down to have dinner together. And in the breaking of the bread, their eyes are opened. They see Jesus. They recognize Jesus as he breaks the bread for their meal. And he vanishes. And they look at each other astounded and they say, oh my gosh, that was Jesus. Weren't our hearts burning within us while he talked to us? How did we not recognize him? They are so excited. They're like, we have to go back to Jerusalem. We have to tell everybody. And so they turn around, they walk to this whole seven and a half mile journey, and they race back to Jerusalem. Now, the average person can run a mile in about 10 minutes. So if these guys are at peak fitness, which they probably are, given the time that they were alive and the amount of walking they did, they would have made it back to Jerusalem in maybe an hour and 15 minutes. If they were like me, maybe it took a couple of hours. But they, they run back to Jerusalem. They find the disciples. And just picture this. Picture their incitement, their enthusiasm. they got to let them know what's just happened. And they come up to them. And I just I picture them kind of bent over and, and breathing hard and being, you, you won't believe. You won't believe what we just saw, who we just saw. Let us tell you. And they start to tell him that they saw Jesus, that Jesus became known to them in the breaking of the bread. And then we get to hear what we just heard today. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them. He disappeared seven and a half miles away and he reappears right here. And he stands there and says to them, peace be with you. 
I think that's really meaningful because I would imagine this is really startling and terrifying and, and they're in the middle of hearing this story and they're already anxious because they don't really know what's happened here. I mean, yes, he was supposed to be raised, but they haven't seen him. And these two disciples are giving their testimony to them and all of a sudden there he is. And, and the scripture tells us that they're startled and terrified and they thought they were seeing a ghost. I don't blame them. I think I might feel exactly the same way if this happened to me, if I were there at this time. And Jesus says to them, why are you frightened? Why do you doubt in your hearts? Look, I'm right here. Look at my hands. Look at my feet. I am with you. Touch me. It's really me. I'm not a ghost. And then the scripture tells us, while in their joy, they were still disbelieving. I love this. I love this. He's standing right there in front of them. They are joyous and still disbelieving. That just feels really real to me. And it's really helpful to me because I think how many of us walk around disbelieving. We live in a time where science rules all, where where. We need everything proved to us mathematically and scientifically. And, and, and we don't get to have Jesus stand right in front of us. And they still disbelieve even when he's right there. There is, if you go to YouTube and put into the search part, the awareness test, a video that comes up where you see four players, or eight players, four of whom have a basketball and are all dressed in white, and four of whom have another basketball and are all dressed in black. And then this voice comes on that says, this is an awareness test. Count the number of times the team in white passes the ball. So you dutifully do, right? Because this is an awareness test and I am aware. At the end of the test, it takes maybe 57 seconds, the narrator says the team in white passed the ball a certain number of times. I'm not telling you, so you'll go look at it. But, did you see the moonwalking bear? And then it proceeds to rewind really quickly and start at the beginning, and it plays again, and there's a moonwalking bear that walks, not, not in the background, that's what I was expecting, oh, it's somebody in the background, right? No, a moonwalking bear walks right into the middle of these two teams, passing the ball, stops in the center of the screen, and proceeds to moonwalk right off the edge of the screen. It's happening the whole time, and I didn't see it. Jesus is in the midst of them on a road to Emmaus right here, and they can't see him. How much is the same? Is it true for us today that God is in the midst, that Jesus is in the midst, that the Holy Spirit is in the midst of us, and we just fail to see it? We are so focused on everything else that we think is important that we don't see God right in our midst. They are standing among them, the, among him, the disciples, in their joy, still bis disbelieving. And then Jesus says, have you got anything to eat? I love this too. Because I think so often we think that the Bible is this coffee table book that's kind of boring, but we got to read it because it's part of our faith. 
It's hilarious. He looks at them, seeing that they're not believing him, and he's like, okay, give me something to eat. I'll prove I'm not a ghost. You will not see the fish go down into my gullet like Casper. And he does. They bring him a piece of fish, and he eats it in front of them so they can see that he's real, that he's alive, that he's present, that he's whole. And this is the other piece of this, I think, is often when God comes to us, when Jesus, the Holy Spirit, comes to us, it is where there is humor. It is where there is joy. The next time you are having a big belly laugh with your friends, remember, that's God present with you. God loves to be in the midst of us when we are joyous. God loves to be in the midst of us when we are struggling. God loves to be in the midst of us when things are kind of blah and we're a little bored, which is really, quite honestly, much of the time. God loves to be with us when we are anxious. God loves to be with us. It is my hope. That as you go out into the world this week, that you take an awareness test. But an awareness test that opens your eyes to all of the places where God is present in the midst of us. That you might not have disbelieving joy, but joy that knows no end. Amen. Please rise as you are able and let us join together affirming our faith this morning. In life and in death, we belong to God. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image of every race and people to live as one community. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Loving Creator God, we thank you for gathering us together this day. Thank you for gathering us all together in the midst of our individual journeys of our lives. Each of us lives a life that is full of experiences. Some of these experiences are full of joy, laughter, excitement, hope, peace, and love. And some of these experiences are full of sorrow, grief, difficulty, loss, and even heartache. 
But God, we thank you for your presence in whatever season of life each of us are in, and for your presence with each of us in whatever we are navigating this morning. We thank you for the joys, for this time to celebrate in the baptism of Boston and Nash, for the opportunity to welcome them into our community of faith as Third Presbyterian Church. We also thank you for being with us through the sadness as we remember Paul and Abigail and their families during this difficult time of sorrow. We thank you for being with those in our community present today in person and online, as well as those who are not able to be here this morning. We thank you for being with the world as we continue to be concerned about people all over the world as we watch the news and worry for others. Loving God, thank you for your presence always, for being present with those feeling joy, and for providing comfort to those who are suffering. And be with us and help us to always be aware of your presence. And we thank you for being with us as we proceed after worship and the congregational meeting. We thank you for all of those who are willing to serve in this congregation through the various leadership positions. We thank you that as they lead, they are never alone and always have you for guidance. We ask that you help them in their discernment as they seek to listen to where you are calling them in this church. We also ask that you help us support them in their leadership roles however we can. We pray all of this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who we know lived a very human life and thus understands our very human experiences. We therefore pray the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I now invite you into a moment, a moment of joy, a moment of gratitude. I invite you to, considering your resources, consider how you can put your faith into action through giving. There are a number of ways you can do so here at Third Church. You can put an offering in the plate as it is passed. You can mail something into the church office. You can use our website. You can text. However you do so, we are very intentional about the stewardship that leadership uses here to take the offerings and gifts and use them wisely for the benefit of the congregation that's inside and the community outside. We are deeply grateful for all of your gratitude and joy. So may this morning's offering be received.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Beloved and beloving one, how can we adequately thank you for all that you have given us? We respond by offering you our very selves and the gifts of our resources, tokens of our love for you. May they touch the lives of others as we have been touched, that all may know your radical, forgiving, transforming love. Amen. As you stand here in this sanctuary or at home, may you know that God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is in your midst. As you go out into the world, wherever you travel, may you know that God the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer is in your midst. May you know that wherever you are and whatever you do, that God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer is with you and flowing through you, now and forevermore. Amen.
Thank you so much for remaining with us in order to be here for our congregational meeting. It is my hope that we will be able to pass through this business pretty quickly and joyfully and then send you off for fellowship or to the Sunday seminar or to the rest of your day quickly. Let us open in prayer. Loving God, we thank you so much for this, your church, that you have entrusted to us. As we vote today on those who will lead us in the year ahead, we pray that your presence might infuse us, infuse them, and that all who are called might fulfill that calling to do your work and your will with joy and thanksgiving. In the holy name of your son Jesus, we pray. Amen. So I want to thank all of you who are here, as well as all of you who are online. If you are online, when we get to the voting portion of the meeting, I'm just going to ask those in the sanctuary to raise their hands if you uh, to vote yes or no or to abstain in, in votes. You online, if you would just please put in the chat your vote and the number of people when we get to those portions. So if there's more than one person on a screen, just put both your names and your votes in the chat. Um, I would like to ask Rachel now if you have a number uh, online for us, including those who are, who are 53. And then I would also ask Jeremy if you have had an opportunity to count who is in the sanctuary. Uh, I've counted about 93. 93 and 53, so we are at 146, which is definitely a quorum. So thank you, Jeremy, for that, and thank you, Rachel. Um, you see before you, up on either screen or online, you will see it on your screen, the docket. Does anyone have any objections or additions or questions about the docket? If not, then I will take it as approved by consent. And then I would like to introduce Elder and Nominating Committee Chair Scott Anthony and turn the meeting over to him. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I have the pleasant job of presenting to you the slate of officers for the coming year. And I firstly would like to thank the nominating committee who joyfully went through this exercise and allowed me to be their leader for the last three months. We met regularly and we discerned or decided uh, of, upon a list of candidates and then we made our texts, our emails and our phone calls, reaching out to, to those folks. So the um, nominating committee includes Darby Thompson, Mary Jane Link, Paul Bishop, Beth Laidlaw, Kathy Schumacher, Lee Thauer, Catherine Thomas, and Sue Joseph. And Scott. And me, thank you. <laughs> so now, I, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm going to present the elders to you. Scott will read the list of nominations. So the nominations for elders are as follows. The class of 2027 include Beth Laidlaw, filling a three-year term, Diane McHugh, filling a three-year term, Jay Rackbell, filling a three-year term, Sean Singh, who is going to be filling a three-year term. And also for the class of 2026, Jim Pocadillo is going to be f filling a two-year term. You have the nominees before you. Are there any nominations from the floor? Then I would entertain a motion to close the nominations and to vote on the entirety of them. Oh, thank you, I forgot about the slide. Um, because we are uh, uh, moving into this new governance model, I thought you would be interested to see how it's going to play out in the coming year. Those that you see in red are the ones that have been nominated for today and that you are about, that are about to be elected, but this shows you what the congregational pillars are and how each of these roles is going to be filled in the course of the coming year. Now I would entertain a motion to 
close the nominations and to vote in omnibus, which means all of them at once. Thank you. May I have a second? All in favor, raise your hands. Anybody online, please place your vote in the chat. Are we completed in there? Are people coming in still? Okay, well, I think we still, uh, in that case, let's invite anyone who is a no vote to raise their hands. All right, then the motion carries. The next motion is now to approve those. We approved closing the nominations and we approved uh, taking the slate as a whole. Now I would entertain a motion to elect the nominees. A second? All in favor, let's just say aye. Aye. Anything online? Okay. Okay. But they are approving it. We, had to, we don't have people who are saying no, no, no. Okay. So if those online would, would go around again, that would be a beautiful thing. All right. So the motion carries, and I think let's give a clap offering to God to our, our new elders who will be coming on board. So uh, we have the class of 2027 uh, for the slate of nominations for deacon. And the, the class of 2027 includes Sula Perry, Perry who is repeating a three-year term. And Tim Stout has agreed is filling in for a three-year term. So that's the class of 2027 for deacons. So you may remember that when we met for our annual meeting the first Sunday in March, that we had almost the entirety of the slate filled for deacons. We were missing two. So these two will mean that our deacons' slots are entirely filled. Okay? So I would entertain a motion to, uh, well, first... Is, are there any nominees from the floor? Okay, so I would entertain a motion to close the nominations and vote in omnibus, which is once again, all of them at once. May I have a second? second. All in favor say aye. aye. I will wait for anyone online to let us know that they approve closing the nominations and moving in omnibus to vote, elect both of them together. That's okay, I know we're waiting. So what's going on here is Rachel, who is um, monitoring the chat, they're about a 30 second delay behind us. If, if you've ever done anything on Zoom, you know how you're not exactly aligned. And so we're waiting for people to begin pouring in with their eyes. So that is, that's what's happening. Okay, and, and people are approving. So let us go ahead and move on to the second half of the vote, which is to actually elect these two as deacons for the class of 2027. I would entertain that motion. Thank you. May I have a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. And we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll wait for you now online. Oh, people who are with us, we're grateful for your presence. Um, if you would also please put in the chat your approval of Sula Perry and Tim Stout uh, on our deacon board as well. That would be a beautiful thing. Anybody see the dancing bear as it's going through our midst? All righty, so we are approved. Thank you very much. Let us move on to the next one. The final uh, slate of nominations for nominating committee members would be for the at-large positions on the much sought after, <laughs> poorly, aligned, poorly maligned nominating committee, but very important never the least, nevertheless. And we have two candidates. Jason Least is going to be the class of 26, and we have an 11th hour a candidate in the name of Emily Plager, who was kind enough to 
agreed to fill that last position so we could complete the voting cycle today. So we have two candidates for the class of 2020. So Jason Leist and Emily Plager Fuchs are uh, our nominees. Are there any nomina nominations from the floor? I'm just so shocked. <laughs> I would entertain a motion to close the nominations and take them in omnibus. May I have a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. All in favor online, we'll sit here and maybe I'll be the dancing bear as we wait for those to come in. What was that? <laughs> you don't want to watch me paint. I don't know that you want to watch me dance either. And they're coming in. All right. So we're having approval for that coming in. And now I would entertain a motion to elect the nominees, including uh, Emily Fuchs, who is not up there, but you have heard that now. A motion. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. All righty, so we will, await, um, we will await our online community as well. There's a sermon in there somewhere, isn't there? Wait, awaiting people coming in. There are prodigal son showing up at the door. We're running to meet them gratefully. All righty. So those have come in. So thank you so very much. Thank you for letting me serve. And thank you again to the nominating committee. This is the nominating committee's most exciting motion coming up here. Now they get to be dismissed with gratitude and thanks. And they were an amazing committee and worked so very, very hard. So um, I, will, uh, I will take that by consent that we allow them to leave this. Uh, and, and once again, in the minutes, please, Jeremy, with grateful thanks. All righty, I think that that is going to bring us. Is there any other business that might properly become before this gathering? Yes. Yes. Can we uh, congratulate James uh, We may absolutely, publicly, and in the minutes, congratulate James Keeley. Where is James Keeley? to come to a close to this meeting. I would now entertain a motion to close with prayer. May I have a second? I will invite Christine to come up and close us in prayer. All in favor? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for gathering us in this place. I feel that we all felt your presence and joy, especially as we thanked and the nominating committee and celebrated together James Keeley being with us. O oh, gracious and loving God, as we go out from this place, please help us to notice your presence and to feel the way that you are calling us and leading us be with our newly elected leaders and help them to feel your presence and your call and help us all to be aware of your presence in this place and where you are calling us as a church to go forward. In your son's name we pray. Amen.